The Live and Alive Tour is off and running. Springfield, Missouri, September 1st and 2nd. Tulsa, Oklahoma, September 15th and 16th. Phoenix, Arizona, September 29th and 30th. Get your tickets to all shows at ryansickler.com. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to the Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it in the new Night Pass Studios. I'm Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, Ryan Sickler. On all your social media, I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for watching this show, sharing this show, telling people about this show. We're up in over 200,000 subscribers now on YouTube. We're up over 5,000 on Patreon. I can't thank you enough. Watching this community grow has been pretty wild, man. Um, so if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, it helps the show. Um, and if you got to have more then you got to check out the Patreon every week on the honeydew with y'all, we hear something that I just, I really, I'm not going to lie to you every week I sit down. I'm like, there's no way we're going to hear some, some stuff that we haven't already heard or whatever. And then we hear like, for instance, um, this, this guy's college roommate, on spring break, went home, just decided to wipe out his whole family, killed his entire family. Why? Well, because he was going to kill all the guys in his house, but he overslept. They got up and went to work, so he went and killed his own family. That's a story. We also have a story of an old elderly couple who was taken hostage by a dude that just killed his own friend on the highway, had them in the house all day long. The old man, he gets loose. Homeboy's got a gun under the seat. What does he do? Subscribe and find out. $5 a month. You sign up for a year. You get over a month of episodes for free. You also get the honeydew a day early. You get it ad free. You get it at no additional cost. It's a cup of coffee, not just for one episode. We've got, I don't even know, there's well over 100 episodes there now. So go check that out. Um, And listen, if you're looking for a new podcast to listen to, I'm telling you, Go listen to my old podcast, The Crab Feast. It's all fun storytelling with everybody you know in comedy. Um, And that community is crazy. It's still going after all these years. It's a podcast I did with Jay Larson. Everybody you know and loves, Bill Burr, Tom Segura, Burr Kreischer, Christina P. They're all on there with different stories. Everybody you like. Um, And subscribe to that. All right. Now, tour dates. If I'm in your town, when you're around, please come out and see me. Uh, let's see. September 1st and 2nd is Springfield, Missouri. September 15th and 16th is Tulsa, Oklahoma. September 29th and 30th, I'm going to be back in Phoenix. October 27th and 28th is Salt Lake City. And then December 8th and 9th, I'm back in San Francisco. All tickets are available at ryansickler.com. All right, that's the business. Now, you know what we're doing over here. I always say uh, these are the stories behind the storytellers, and we're going to highlight the lowlights this week, y'all, with the return of Joe List. Welcome back to the Honeydew, Joe List. <laughs> thank you very much. I'm so excited. Dude, thank you for being patient through that. Of course. I appreciate it. I enjoyed <laughs> it. I got to get on the goddamn Patreon. I, you told me some other stories off camera that I'm like, Dude, this is the most insane thing I've ever heard. 18-year-old cold case solved. We had the double lung transplant. We've had a girl with two <laughs> pussies. Um, we wow. had a lady with, I think it was up to four assholes. We've had, <laughs> <laughs> we had a dude that survived the, uh, a bombing. Uh, we've had military guys. We've had people who've died and come back. It's, it's, it's in, it's a wild show. Wow. It's a wild show. You just described my family. Four assholes, <laughs> two <laughs> pussies, military and surviving a bombing. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh shit uh well before we get into whatever we're going to talk about today please plug and promote everything joe list yeah come out comedian joe list.com to the camera or to you what do i do wherever you two like shot this is, this is you right here All if you right. want to go wide hit them right there joe list. hi folks <laughs> um i'm gonna switch back and forth really do some work for you producer yeah, do your live switch yeah uh yeah comedian joe list.com for dates and uh, i have a new special it's out right now on youtube called enough for everybody and there's another one. There's three. One's called I Hate Myself. One's called This Year's Material. And one's called Enough for Everybody, which just came out. So go watch it. Like, subscribe, all those things. How are Do you? Um, how? What, what's? When's the last special you put up? Um, and how long in between? It's been three in like three year, three and a half years. One yeah. came out. I can't remember the dates. One came out in 2020. I guess summer of 2020. 
Mm-hmm. And then one came out last year, February of 2022, I think, mm-hmm. or April of 2022. And then now August of 2023. Where'd you shoot this one? All They're all shot at the Village Underground at the oh, Comedy Cellar yeah, in New York. Great. Yeah. I just keep doing the same thing. I'm like, let's just set me up again with that one. And for a while, I was like, maybe I'll do a trilogy of Village Underground specials. And then I shot this one. And I was like, maybe I'll just keep doing it here. Who cares? <laughs> Because it's it's intimate, it's home, and it feels. And yeah. to me, a special. Everyone's like, "Well, the background, and you can't just keep shooting in the same place." And I'm like, "Well, why not? Who cares? The joke, the jokes are the special. What difference does it make if I'm in a different room?" Dude, I talk about this all the time when people talk about like production value. I was just saying, like you you complimented the studio, and thank you very much. But going to New York, like it just seems so much more lax and chill i didn't look at it as low budget or anything i was like oh this is what po- how podcasting started it was at tables and apartments and right some people did them in their cars or wherever and then it got elevated to these studios and things like that but if you go back and the one example i really love is Chappelle's show when you go back to the um rick james sketch mm-hmm. They didn't bother to even put something on the green screen. Right, it's right. green screen. Right, they right. didn't bother to just click a frame of anything. Yeah. When he's in the room and he's uh, tearing up the couch, it's it's four black walls. It's a wooden window f- crawl- on a black wall. It's yeah. not even a real window. And there's a mirror. It's like there's nothing in there. But all you remember is the comedy of that whole fucking thing. That's how I feel. And uh, But yeah, I'm glad you're saying this because I do Tuesdays with Stories with Mark Norman, another plug, uh, funny yeah, podcast, sure. the funniest, I think. And um, it's I think just, we, we have him coming on. We got, oh yeah, he's the best. But we got, we're in like an office space. It's like four by six. And we, we like taped like glue out of like a whatever you call it, like a toothpaste thing of glue and just jammed wallpaper and it's all coming down. And everyone's like, you guys suck. Get a real studio. <laughs> Not everybody, but several people. Yeah. And we're like, but we, we just listen. We're just talking. Yeah. Who cares? That's how I feel. But you guys do it right. I mean, this looks amazing. That's nice. This is, uh, Te- I hope I'm saying his name right. Is it Ted Munns? Yeah, Ted Munns. He makes these podcast signs for so many podcasts out there uh bad friends hey babe he's just they're everywhere this dude's work is sick yeah it looks awesome it's sick go check him out on instagram um let's talk about you so before uh we sat down you told me that you and your wife are expecting this is your first child yeah first child yeah, congrats. and uh it's scary because we're very old my wife is 68 years old. <laughs> <young. laughs> <laughs> um, oh, no, about okay. a grandma when she comes <laughs> um, out. <laughs> you know, you know, what's, you know what's crazy? I have my aunt. My aunt's kid is young. She's like twenty, and she's about to have a kid. And my uncle's wife and my wife is having a kid, and they're due a day apart. And my uncle's wife is younger than my wife, so she's going to become a grandmother the day after my wife becomes a mother, and yeah. she's older. If that makes sense, it's it does. Yeah, it's, it's just a little the, funky. I'm, I'm rattling funky the time. math around in well, my head. Well, we wait because we're in showbiz. My so wife wait, and how I are old comics. are you? First of all, I'm 41. Okay, and, and how old's your wife? 45. Your wife's 45. Yeah, she's older than me. And, uh, well, honestly, like, I was 41 when my daughter was born. I was 40 when we got 41 when my daughter was born. That makes me feel good. Yeah, I feel old, and you you don't seem old, dude. I almost just died. You're fine. Trust me. What do you mean? I had this whole ordeal oh, with, uh, yeah, it's all good. I don't want to hear. But it was a month. I spent the month in the hospital in, uh, of January in the hospital. And Heart trouble? I, I had, <laughs> it wasn't my fault. That's the thing. Oh, okay. It, it was right. hospital trouble. All right. I wasn't supposed to, that wasn't supposed to happen. I'm I, petrified of heart I health. went for a, a back surgery and then I laid, they let me lay so long that I clotted and I almost died. It was a whole ordeal. So now I spent a month there. But. Oh, um, you're fine, dude. Terrifying. Trust me. You look like you're in great shape. <laughs> Thank you. You're you're uh and 45. I mean, these days I feel like with all the advancement in medicine and everything, it's not a big deal. Well, my wife is extremely healthy too. She eats very healthy. I don't. She works out all that shit and she has good genes. I mean, her dad died at 51, but uh, All right. <laughs> no, no, that's <laughs> what I made great, that up. No. You said good. No, no, said I, made good. <laughs> it, I made that up. You know, he lived a good life. But uh, yeah, I think she's healthy and I'm younger than her. And uh, a, you know, a kid only really needs parents for what, 10 years? 
Then they're fine. A little longer than that. All right, 18, 20. Um, but they only do need love from one. That's what all the therapists have told me. Probably oh. lied to me to keep me coming and get my checks, so just in case you ever want to check out. Oh, jeez. Um, all right, well, she's very cold, so I'll <laughs> give them all the love. So 45, is your wife as concerned as you are? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. She's not as uh, openly neurotic as I am. She's not like telling you, I'm really nervous, I'm 45, and she's not putting that out there. Are not, you putting that out there to her, or is this just your anxiety? I keep telling her, you're old as shit, <laughs> baby. <laughs> you look at you. Uh, you look terrible. Do you say that in a nicer way? No, you, no. Do you express concern? Uh, I'm like slightly concerned. It's hard. I guess... You know, like when you have a kid, you start doing math. I, I think also when you get to your 40s, like, because I'm like, okay, when I'm as old as my, or the, my son is as old as I am now, I mm -hmm. will be 82, mm -hmm. which is to say dead. Uh, most likely. So in comedy, most likely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm yeah, a mess. I, aren't I ate McDonald's probably. last night. Yeah. So. <laughs> Um, so that stuff is scary. And you start to do like, my parents were so young. My parents had me really young, which is probably why I'm fucked up. But like when I was, my dad was my age. I was like a senior in high school. Yeah. Or maybe be older than that. So that stuff is on my mind all the time. But um, it's a lot of math when you do that stuff. Yeah. But it's also like you, I talk about it. I think about it for a few minutes and then you're like, all right, well, it is what it is. I mean, this is, you have to accept. And this is when we had a kid. And we struggled for a long time to have a kid. We started trying a few years ago, which was still late. And uh, yeah, they kept, they kept, you know. Well, that's the us. thing too. I remember when um, my daughter's mother and I, we were talking about having a baby. Is like, we, it took three tries, right? Which is quick. Some people, we've had friends who have done that as well. Like it, my brother, the first, their first child took them like a year. You know, it yeah. could be years before you. It blows me away that there are billions of humans, and it's really not that easy to make one. That's what's wild to Isn't me. It? Because the numbers I, would would say opposite. I always find it fascinating because people are, there's all these accidental pregnancies and teen that's pregnancies. That's what I think it is. If you don't want it, that's when it's coming. When you right. really want it. It's I like know. that Zen shit. Like if you try to sink, you float. And if you try to float, you sink. We have um, a friend who her parents were told they couldn't have children. Um, they try and try and tried, So they adopted two. And after they adopted, they went and had sex, had a baby. I keep hearing stories like and this. And it was all that stress and anxiety of, you know, you can't, you can't. You can't. And once they right. felt fulfilled and relaxed and just let it go, they had a baby. Life so she's the only biological of the three. And she's the youngest, but, you know. And the favorite, I imagine. Absolutely. All the money goes to her. Bro. All the money. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like you have to let go. This is funny because we, we had trouble getting pregnant. Because first we thought, you know, we didn't do any research. We're idiots. We're comics. So we're just dipshits. So we were just like, all right, take out your uh, IUD or IED, whatever it's called. They rip that out. We start fucking. I'm like, great, you'll get pregnant in no time. <laughs> They rip that out. <laughs> yeah. We start fucking. You'll get pregnant in no time. Yeah, but that's <laughs> it doesn't work out that way. And so we nah. did it for like a year. And she did get pregnant and we lost the baby, which was, you know, devastating. Oh, yeah, it happened a couple times, which was a bummer. Can obviously. I ask how far along you were getting? Not too far, fortunately. Like beyond the first trimester? No, or? no. We didn't have any of that. It was more like a few weeks. It was like three, four weeks or whatever, like five weeks, maybe. But still very upsetting. I mean, there's some people yeah. that lose them, obviously, like yeah. well into a pregnancy, uh, which is more devastating. But yeah, it was it was certainly sad. And then you have to start the whole process over again. It takes time. And in our minds, we're like, our, our lives are ticking away. So then we decided to go to a uh, fertility clinic, which, side note, the fertility clinic is all comedians. There's like one in New York. They're like, you're comedians too? And you Two. look over, it looks like a green room at the funny bone. It's just like a, a row of... 40 year old female comics like hey i'm hey, like Joe. oh just a bunch of fucking uh you know comics that are trying to make it so you put everything off but anyways we went and i have something i never know how to pronounce this i think it's called varicocally or varicosely it's it's varicose veins in your balls okay like the back of your ball bag. if you look it up it literally says it looks like a bag of worms my ball bag is appalling it's right. really just the back of just the back yeah, right, the, front yeah the front is hey, gorgeous man. yeah beautiful you can eat off these balls 
<laughs> the back, the back, it looks like, you know, your grandmother's legs or something. It's just, it looks like worms. It literally looks like that. And I read and now, about is this, it. Can you see it, or is this just on the inside when they scan it, or do you see no, the back? No, you can. I could feel it. The veins in there, you yeah. can feel in the back of your balls. Yeah, and I okay. was like, this is lumpy and weird. And I had to show my wife, and she's like, ugh. And I would literally like, because my I don't know about you, but my ball bag is like six feet long. I can yeah. I can twist it and look yeah. at the back, yeah. you know, and grab it and twist it around. So I was like, oh, this is something, and it can even cause some pain. Like people have surgery to fix it because it can cause some discomfort or whatever. Anyways, it also can cause um, sperm depletion or whatever, or uh, what's that? Low sperm count. Yeah. So we went to the fertility clinic, and this is how much it sucks to be a woman. We're sitting there, and I was like, yeah, I have a varicose vein, and I, I've read that can affect your sperm, and they're like, no, it's her. They didn't even <laughs> look into it or anything. They're like, just, dude, their pen, just quiet down. It's, it's definitely this old <laughs> bitch right here. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> They were like, that would take your sperm count from 15,000 to like 11,000. That's what my doctor said. He goes, just so you know, a low sperm count is still like, yeah, whatever, 11,000. Yeah. yeah. They were like, no, don't even bother talking again. <laughs> it's, it's her. So we went and then there's like IVF, like straight IVF, I think is like hundreds of thousands, tons of money and no guarantee. And right. if it doesn't work, you have to just do it all over again. And, uh, you know, I'm doing well, but we're in comedy. I'm like, I don't feel comfortable gambling with a hundred thousand dollars. And so we were kind of just like, well, that sucks. Cause they told us the chances are like 1% doing the math, which is correct. Cause she's 44 at the time. It's 1%. Wild. To wait, to get I'm, pregnant and take it to term. You say a hundred thousand. Is that what the actual cost was? And is that uh, out of pocket as well? Yeah, it's something like that. I mean, it might be less or more cause we didn't go that route. And then but it's they, up there like that. Yeah. With a 1% chance? No, no, I'm sorry. 1% oh. if you don't do that. Got it. Got it. Got it. That's like that's just us straight. We're going to have sex and see what happens to get it get pregnant and take it to term at the age of 44 is like 1%. I see. So that's when we which we also felt stupid because we were like, "Oh, we've just been trying like idiots being like, "Here we go," not knowing it's 1 in 100, which is still something. IVF I I forget, but is it only to like 40% or something? So it's a huge increase, but still a good chance of not. And then we were like, oh, we can't do that. That's too much. And then egg donor was like this other option. And I was like, if you want to do that, that's up to you. I would rather have it be her genetics also. But that felt like too much money to spend. So we were, I was like, it's your decision. And uh, she ultimately wanted to do it. She just wanted to be a mom. And the thing to me about egg donor is yeah, it's, it's, she's carrying the baby. Me, yeah, it's right. in her bot. So to me, it's just her baby. I don't so know. So they take your sperm, yeah, fertilize the egg of another person? Yeah, so you buy then, the eggs, okay. which is much cheaper. It was like 20000 which is not nothing. And It's so wild to me that there's this whole setup for this at different tiers. Right, right. It's like you a know. Patreon. Five dollars a month, y'all. It's crazy. Well, if you got the money, you could do this, or there's this, but then there's this down here too. You want the bronze package? Yeah, exactly. You want your bronze? You can get some lady you don't here. know. Yeah. yeah. So that was because then we decided to go egg donor, which is. Funny because you have to go and like choose from the people. They give you the baby photos of egg donor people. Oh, so you're so not you, getting the adult photo. You're getting their baby photo. Well, you do. Once you buy the egg, you get an adult photo. What is going on? It's, fuck, it's so <laughs> weird, dude. Oh, this is like some kind of Snapchat the, shit or something. It's so bizarre. And it feels like a dating app, but <laughs> it it's like children. It's a Tinder profile over here. It feels creepy. You're literally like swiping on little kids and they have like pigtails and they're like in and dresses. And up to how old are they showing you the original pictures? Like baby, uh, baby, like, like newborn, four or five years old. Because okay. I think they want to give you a sense. At least of something. Like, yeah, I was gonna say a, a newborn. Who the hell looks like that when they get to four or five? Right. Know? Yeah. No. It was like okay. I, maybe a five or six year old girl or so. And um, so you, you get someone that kind of looks somewhat like your wife, I guess. And then it has all like I'm mean, into play oh, soccer. Is going to school for this because a lot of them are going to college. And they're trying to pay their way. And they do extensive background checks and all that stuff. 
and then you do a uh, um health background whatever um if you're i forget all the words i'm really dumb it's okay me too. but um you know if you if you're flagged for certain diseases or whatever mm -hmm. and if you guys both match up if you have that gene and so it's kind of strange because it almost feels like cheating in a weird way i'm like literally say, picking out a woman for our shit to yeah mesh. but you sort of pick like this superwoman so to speak yeah and you're like well we want Healthier an athlete jeans athlete yeah yeah no pre uh no predis uh not predisposed to any that's the word that i was looking, looking for, for yeah, yeah, yeah any absolutely. genetic uh bs yeah yeah so that was um it was exciting and then we got the woman and then we got the eggs and it ended up being one only we we're only one was good i don't know how any of this works it should be better this was really her story to tell i just realized in the middle of <laughs> it i'm like you should probably have her on um but yeah so we got the one egg and of course i have to go jerk off in a cup which is you know there's a million stories about it and it's just so uncomfortable and uh did they give you any fodder in there for your little jerk session well i had to go twice because i first time we did it and then sure for whatever reason did. something had to go something sure went wrong yeah. yeah well it's also hilarious we were laughing too because the doctor is like gorgeous and my wife and i both made the same joke of like well could yeah, you like just Joe's back. It, like you don't, don't even have to do on. anything just chill just like maybe diagnose me with something uh, look at my varicose veins yeah look at the back of my ball <laughs> um, but yeah so you go in there and the first time i went it had like a streaming thing and there was porn on there which mm. i'm not a big porn guy um so i was kind of like going through i was like oh this is great but i realized i'm just flipping through porn with like no erection whatsoever just business like like the way yeah, you look at netflix from, what yeah, should i watch yeah, no, yeah i don't like missionary yeah. i'm like that's interesting and anyways you get it done and then time had passed they wanted a fresher sample for whatever reason so i had to go back again and the second time there was no porn but there was literally like Disney Plus and Netflix Get and stuff. I out. swear to God. Jerking off the Boba Fett. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, exactly. I'm like, I guess Baby Yoda's cute. The new Segura special's up there. That's funny. Maybe I can. Um, so I ended up just looking at my phone and shit. But um, yeah, it's it's awkward. And um, and then you have to, you know, put it behind a thing. And it was weird. But anyways, it all worked out. Now she's so pregnant. can I ask? So your sperm goes into this egg this egg goes into your wife i get that that egg is from someone else and that genetics lie in there but once you put it in your wife nothing from her penetrate like there's uh, listen again That's i'm an idiot I feel. but i would feel like if we're moving this thing into this thing some of this thing's things got to get in there. Is there really no genetic link at all? I guess not, but that's how I feel. I'm like, isn't your blood and yes, all your at least everything, your all your fluids, diet. everything that's happening in there? But diet and disposition and all that stuff. I mean, I'm a big, I think so much of human behavior is learned behavior from parents. And obviously, genetics are a big role. But I know, like, my cousin is so much like his, he has a stepdad, it's not his biological dad. I don't know a father and son more similar than these two. Back. Yeah, and he's raised since he was two or whatever. I mean, like, personality traits, behavior, sense of humor. So uh, to me, I don't know. And she's do it. She's had some emotion with it. It's not easy. But I think she's fully accepted. And once that baby's in you, it's fully your baby. How could it you not know? be? Yeah. You're, I mean, you're bringing an egg to life. Yeah. How could it not be your baby? I mean, it's literally, and I mean, I'm like, I, she's like six months pregnant right now. I'm like having fun in the sun, by the way. I've been in LA for two weeks. I'm just living it up. I'm like, it was the best night ever. And she's like, and yeah. Telling all the wrong facts yeah. about it and shit. Yeah. I couldn't be less, more, I couldn't be more removed from this child of mine. So yeah, I mean, it's her, they're, they're together for nine full months. So this is also funny, by the way. So you have to, eventually you have to tell your son that like, you know, you're an egg donor baby. And we know, we've talked to a couple people that are egg donor babies themselves that are adults now. So you go to like a counselor because they do a lot of counseling and everything to make sure you're feeling good and all that. And she goes, now, eventually you'll have to tell the baby. Now, and this pissed me off so bad. She presents it to us. What age do you think you should bring it up to your son? Like this. And I go, I don't know, 15? And she's like this, no, no. 
no. And I'm like, well, why don't you just tell me the number <laughs> instead of making me look like an asshole? Listen, yeah. And she's <laughs> like, no, you want to tell them when they're like four or five, when they're really young kids, so it's not a shock later in life. Which again, I'm like, well, just fucking tell me that, you bitch. You're, you're a <laughs> yeah, psychologist. Right. Now I you just, have the answer. Yeah, now I just feel like an idiot. Like, <laughs> duh, I don't know. So anyways, but it was, so we're supposed to, I guess when kids first start asking, I shouldn't have called her a bitch. I appreciate her. I feel bad. She's not going to watch this, no, but um, we're not going to edit it. Leave it in there. Put in the C word and plug in. <laughs> Put in the it up. C word. Um, no, but so you know, they're just supposed to, when the kids become interested in where babies come from, I guess, and that way, I guess, if a teenager, you tell them it's a little more shocking or like, "What? My whole life is a lie." So you kind of plant the seed in their head as a kid. It seems very confusing and difficult. I'm, I'm having a hard time with it right now. I'm not I excited know, about that I wouldn't talk. know. I, as a dad of an eight-year-old right now, I don't... She would have already known now by four, uh, uh, three or four years. And I'm just like, I don't know if I would drop that on somebody. I guess I understand the point of not... I get it. ...waiting Plant the too seed long. But and, yeah. So I think they won't fully understand, but they'll have this idea of like, well, we wanted you so bad and your mom was old as shit. So and I'll one be. day they're going to go to school where they have a computer that we didn't and Google this and look it all up and understand right. everything. So I don't know. And ultimately they need their to know their own genetics and all that stuff. Listen, and I'll tell you this. You're was it a psychologist you said or Yeah, some kind of Yeah. I would say by her response to your the way she set you up like that, I wouldn't listen to anything that lady's got to say. <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe we should get a second set opinion. You up, man. Yeah. I mean, it was really like, uh, like it was a, a setup, not emasculate, but just like the, I was just like fuming. I'm like, so you just made me look stupid for no reason. You could have been like, and when he's five, you're right. gonna want to, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, because what if you would have said four or five, which you said, yes, yeah, very good. Very yeah, good, right. dummy. <laughs> um, but yeah, so anyways, long story short, we're very excited. And it's taken so long, it feels that much more um, meaningful and exciting. So can I ask you this? The donor, mm -hmm. do you meet the donor? Do you... And, and does the donor have rights to visit the child, see the child, or any? How does that work? And you don't have to answer any of this if you're not supposed to. I'm going to get you in trouble. I don't. I'm, like, fully ignorant towards that. And my wife would know better. You should have her on. She's a great guest. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Zoom in, dude. Um, yeah. I don't. I don't know. I'm really I dumb. hear you. It's okay. I think that they might. I don't know how it works. Because I'm sure she had to sign a bunch of paperwork when she donated. Yeah, and I know guys. Away. I know a couple of comics that used to donate sperm for money. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot less money than uh, women get. Because there's 75,000 sperm in each ball or whatever. That's so, a good point. But yeah, I've, I've brought that up with him. I'm like, so you might have children around. And he's like, yeah, I guess so. Um, but I think eventually the the kid can contact. I actually am just well. I mean, the kids at eighteen is going to be able to do whatever your child wants to do. At right, that right. Point. Yeah. So yeah. it's not like there's going to be a hiding it. And you're also telling. Do you know what you're having? A boy. So you're also telling him from four or five that this is how you came to to be. Right. Um, so he's going to naturally be curious, wouldn't you? I would. Yeah, of course. I'm like, what? Well, also, once you get the, the egg donor, you get an adult photo, and she's a gorgeous woman, so I wouldn't mind. So wait, once you pick myself. it, that's when you get the adult? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then they send a, a tasteful nude just so you can really see what the body, <laughs> see what that body is, works like. Uh, no, and she was it's tasteful. <laughs> it's just like a headshot thing, and yeah, she's gorgeous and seems very nice and but you haven't met her though, personally. No, no, I don't think we meet her. Okay, I don't think. <laughs> oh man, I don't know. I should have more information, but I'm just excited about the once. I don't actually think about the donor thing that much. Once it's just I have a pregnant wife there, and I love her, and I'm excited for the baby, and it'll be. Well, I imagine also with the um, trauma of losing a baby, you're just stoked that this is working and happening now. As yeah, well. yeah, this is the far as we've gone, and we, and we keep going, and they're like everything's healthy, and it's. Her age is not nearly as much of a factor now because we're working with a young donor and the baby's been um, tested and all the ultrasound and oh. all that stuff. So the baby's looking healthy. And so good. how old's the donor? She at the time of donor, she was twenty six. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So it's a so nice you have a twenty six year old egg in a forty five year old body. Yes. 
and forty year old cum and forty year old cum, <laughs> yeah, mixing all together, yeah. Put it together, and you got a nice uh, kid. So yeah, hopefully, um, it'll all be gravy. Very excited. So let me ask you. I have a bunch of questions. Sure. If science doesn't exist and you aren't able to have a child, like I don't know, in the sixties, yeah, would uh, you adopt? I don't know. We were not that into the idea. But first of all, adoption is, I think, really difficult and a long, that, yeah. arduous process. And uh, I'm always, I always joke with this. I make, in my podcast, I've made so many pedophile jokes, just like <laughs> offhand where I'm like, all right, take care, subscribe, kiss your mother, fuck a kid. I mean, like just stuff like that, where I'm like, if they did any research I have made 350 million, <laughs> million. pedophilia <laughs> jokes. They're going to be like, this is psychotic. We can't give up a child to this human being. Um, but I think it's a really long, hard process. And um, I don't know. We, I guess we would have thought about that if, but it, we did this before we got to that option. But it seems very difficult to adopt. Did you guys talk about the even this not working and still being, you know, completely fulfilled and that's what the way it's going to be for you? Yeah, well, I'm pretty good about accepting th all my uh, neurosis and anxiety comes from worrying about the future. Once things are happening, I'm like, all right, well, that's what has happened. So I think we talked about that herpes mm -hmm. last time. <laughs> yeah, Once you weird. get it, you're like, all right, well, I guess that's that. So we're this time, too, this is our one because we only had one egg. So we were like, let's do it and whatever happens happens and to me it's like i'm a, a relative optimist i'm like if it doesn't work out you know we'll travel and keep living the lives we're living we're living a very full life as is and um you know i've been doing well so i'm like we have my not having kids is fun too you can kind of especially if you're doing well financially i'm like we can go off to paris or wherever and you know, there's still a fulfilling life to be had, but I'm definitely happy it's working out this way. What are you looking most forward to about being a dad? Um, boy, I've really, well, I have nieces and nephews that really, it sounds like so um, try it or weird, but like, I feel like you really feel like seen and heard as a, as a, 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 father figure and uncle with like the kids are like wow that's great and you can feel the difference of like connecting like mm -hmm. i feel my nieces and nephews i can feel like that i've gotten through to them which is so difficult and you just feel this feeling of like wow they really appreciate me and i love them and there's this connection and i feel meaningful to them it gives you it does give you meaning to be around children even children that aren't mine i'm not even related to gives me the most fulfilling feeling. The things I'm most proud of in my life are relationships with my nieces and nephews. So I imagine, I can only imagine that a kid is that much greater. And then obviously when like, I'm big into sports, I imagine my kid will be as well. And um, all those things, the catch. And, and I think also making, not, I don't wanna say making up, for, but being the father that I didn't have. I had a father, but the being in the way that, it, I would have liked. What sort of dad was your dad? My dad's a, he's a good dad. I don't want to talk disparaging of my dad, but very Boston, Irish, Catholic, stoic. Not a lot of um, emotion. Not a lot of emotion, not a lot of communication. Very little in response. We talk about the Sox for about 10 minutes, maybe the Patriots. That's, That's a wrap. It. Yeah, there's no... Um, so he's still alive now. Yeah, he's still around. Very funny guy. Comes to the shows, laughs, funny... Funny guy. Is he still with your mom? Yeah, yeah. They're so together. So are you talking to him about being a dad? No. That's not happening. Do you want to? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What would happen if you just called him and was like, Dad, I got a bunch of questions about being a father. You got an hour? It's hard. What if you just said that? I keep thinking this. This is like on my list of things to do. This is what my therapist talks about a lot. He's like, call him. This is my, my therapy impression. I tried, I've been in therapy for years now. I tried calling my dad one time years ago. Well, I mean, we've literally never talked to the phone. We'll text oh, really? a little bit. Okay. Zero So there's phone not calls. a day-to-day -day or even weekly communication, you would say? Never. You just see him when you see him? Is I, that sort of thing? Yeah. Okay. I see him. If I go up to, they're in Boston or Massachusetts. Right. When I go up there, 
They're around. He doesn't come visit here. No. My no. parents do not come or to New York. Or New York, York excuse no. me. Yeah. My mother is afraid of bridges. That's her excuse. And doesn't what about come to New York. I've lived in New York for, <laughs> I know. I've lived in New York for 17 years. I grew up in Massachusetts, so it's 200 miles. They have come three times. My appendix erupted. <laughs> I did Letterman and I got married. Those are the three That's it. visits. Yeah. They've never been like, we're coming down to New York. Even to mom. Hang out. Mom's not. Yeah. Her less. I think my dad would more, but she's just filled with anxiety. And how many brothers and sisters do you I have? I have one older sister. One older sister. Okay. And are they more affectionate or open with her? No. So it's not just this guy to guy thing, or no. he's the son, whatever. No, it's just very my my mother's my parents' love language is more like my dad. Like if I, you know, I'll come, I'll drive up to Massachusetts. My dad will take the car to get an oil change while I'm still in bed. They wake up early and he's like, "Got the oil changed." That's what I get. Yeah, I don't get. That's, congrats on you. the kid. Yeah, that's yeah. like you. my. There has been no discussion of you me really. You got 3,000 more on that. Right? Yeah, yeah, enjoy. <laughs> I even put the sticker in the thing. You know, or my mother buys like, oh, Joe, he loves DiGiorno. We got DiGiorno's. Opens the freezer. Yeah, not a lot of like, we're so proud of you or anything like that. But, you know, they're doing the best they can or whatever. But, um, yeah. It's on your list of things to do to calm and talk to them before your son's born. Yeah, I've had this. Because how when is your son due? October 29th. It's coming, it's, on the way. it's coming, man. But yeah, so I called it's him coming. once when I was in therapy and I, I was like, hey. And he was like, what? Like, what is it? It throws him off. And I was like, yeah, you know, I always just I a talk. call will be like, is he worried that you're about to tell him some horrible news or well, something? Because it's I always joke. I'm like, if I see my dad's number, I'm like, my mom died. Yeah, <laughs> I'm okay. about to get the I, news. I, yeah. I call my parents <laughs> Deb and Steve. Like they're and I have since I was a kid. No. I swear to God, since I was like 13. You I'm call like, your dad Deb. Steve and your mom Deb? Yes. That's not even their names, which is weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I don't know. And we're like. You ever hug? You hug your dad? We hugged. I started hugging after therapy. I was like, hey, we don't hug. And they kind of put it on me because I've always been like, you know, eh, hugging's gay or whatever. I was going to say, after he hung up with you, he's probably like, our son's gay. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> our son's 100% gay. He wants a hug now. So I was just like, you know, we should start hugging and saying, I love you. We never really do that. You so said that this was to your gross. dad on the phone? No, I said it like to my mom on the phone. And then she tells my dad. I kind of communicate with my dad through my, gotcha. my mother. And like, what is your mom's response to that? Um, she's like, okay. <laughs> like, well, this is weird. It's it's very um, it's very strange. That is interesting. Are you an affectionate man with your wife? Do you cuddle? Do you like? Yeah, to be, big time. Yeah. yeah, I really love to snuggle and spoon. And do you uh, see yourself being an affectionate dad with your son? Oh yeah, yeah. I think I'm gonna be crying all the time. Oh dude, yeah, a lot you of, trust me. A lot of kissing. You and will, yeah. bro. You're gonna go get you nonstop. You're like, <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, I'm like I have um I have a niece and nephew, my sister's kids who are 18 and 15 now, and then my best friend's kids are 11 and seven and there he named his kid after me which is really nice, touching yeah. and um they call me funkle joe i have like a, a deep relationship with them and i'm like my nephew is we share a name so i feel very connected to him but i'm like he says stuff that i'm like i can't believe you're why i remember when you were born this is great like i'm so proud blown away by him like he used a sentence where he said for example like he was playing some game he's like what if we played a game where you pick a color for example and just him saying for example I'm i was i almost started crying yeah, i was dude. like for example where'd you get that my daughter is eight years old it's a 12 minute ride to her mom's house last night she freestyle rapped a, an entire fucking song about the solar system <laughs> i couldn't get over it and it was good i was like God, where what yeah. And I'd be like, she's like, give me another planet, Dad. And I'd be like, Pluto. She's like, it's not a planet. And we argue about that. I'm like, fine, Neptune. And she'll go on a whole rap about Neptune. So I'm like, I'd say it all the time. I'm like, you used to just cry and pee and poop. Right. It's all you would do. No, it's mind blowing. It's 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 discovery in your home, bro. Yeah, and yeah. it's and you weren't even there for so long. Mm -hmm. And then you were there and now you're you just saying created things. a soul out of Well, that's what I struggle with sometimes because you know, I I'm like I'm doing 
very well. Like, you know, I, I did the Wilbur Theater in Boston, my hometown, and like, it sold out. And my family, they come. Mm -hmm. They do come, and I think they laugh. But I'm like, aren't you, like, blown away? Aren't you like, what the fuck? That's crazy. I remember you said you wanted to do comedy when you were nine. Ah! But they just kind of go, all right. DiGiorno. Take care. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, How's the oil? DiGiorno. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, there's no real like, yeah. And I think if I was like, are you guys proud of me? They'd be like, of course. Yeah. Why are you even asking? What a silly yeah. question. So, and like the the kid, there's it just not, feels like inherent to them that it, of course, all these things, I, we just don't verbalize or or emotionally show you that. I think so. And, and again, it's learned behavior. That's what they got. You know, I think mm -hmm. um, my dad's was, my dad played catch with me and everything and came to all my games. So I think that was more than his dad did. Right. So it's like. So I've already, I'm already a better yeah, dad. Yeah. I'm there. Um, but yeah, they have not really said like i've lived past 42 so i feel like i'm better than my dad you know what i mean yeah. i've already done a better job right. than my dad. i got eight years on him well so I, I i think they think you know we're we're sh we're at the show but i'm having a kid they have not said like we're so excited no you're congrats, gonna be a great dad where are you registered no. can we come out to help the register they've asked about like coming my mother has been like yeah i can't the new york the bridges and this, it's just too much bridges. i'm like okay i guess fear of bridges greater than love of child and grandchild I don't is know. there no route with gps these days to get from boston to new york without a bridge well, that's what i said i'm like you can do the tunnel you could go right, through right, yeah i guess you still have to go with the gw i guess you could go west it'd be like a 10 hour trip i don't yeah. know you could go west and down and then take the tunnel or you know just close your eyes on the yeah, bridge fuck it, put an too. eye mask on for 10 seconds have a couple cocktails yeah um knock you out on the way and or wherever. fly i live 10 minutes from laguardia they can also fly laguardia that would be bridge free can i just say this why don't you just fucking tell them i bought you tickets they're booked here's when i want you to come yeah that's what i could do my therapist says i should make them work for the relationship be like, all right, well, I guess you can see the kid whenever. Or be like, you're coming down, you fucking assholes. Yeah, I I want, at least when, when he's born. I would think. Yeah, it'd be nice to have your parents there. Yeah. Also, let grandma and grandpa hold him for a couple hours while you take a nap. You're going to be wiped, dude. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot going on. I'm already tired. I, I did know. four shows last night. Yeah. Baby. Can't forget about it. No, nope. you got a baby, dude. <laughs> oh. Wait till you have to start booking sitters and how much they cost and all that. I know it's terrifying. Let's go back. I'm just so curious about your parents. So are you going to call your dad and have this conversation? I got to try. I keep meaning to. And my dad, he's about to have a surgery on his um, face. He had like a, a dental thing that fucked up his sinuses and shit. And he has to have surgery. And he, we did have a moment. We were in Maine a, a couple of weeks ago on vacation. And just kind of out of the blue, he was like, yeah, I got to have a serious surgery. They, they put you uh, out. And uh, I'm nervous about it. I was going to say, he and, must have be worried about it to and talk it's about it. a month before my baby's born. So I think like, oh, and it throws you off. You know, when someone behaves differently, you're kind of like, what? That's the weird thing about not showing emotion for so long. Because then when somebody does, you're like, oh, I, I'm not ready for this. And it kind of took me aback. I was like, oh, well, yeah, well, that's crazy. Well, I think it'll be okay. And I'm actually driving up there because, again, my mother... The surgery's in Boston. They live in the suburbs. And my mother's like, I can't drive into the city. She's just a terrified person. So I was like, I'll tell you what, I'll come up there and I'll drive. I love driving into the city. So that feels like service. So I'll come and be there. In my mind, I'm like, before he goes under, maybe I'll be like, I love you, Pop, or something. But um, it well, when he wakes me. up, you'll be there for him. Yeah, exactly. So you know what you could say when he's there? You could say, you know what, you know what really is scaring me lately? having this kid can i talk to you about that then right. he's a hostage in that bed bro right. you got him he's strapped in you got him yeah he's like you know jimmy stewart he can't in real window. say nothing <laughs> he can't he's laying there dude you got him so i think my dad will probably be more open to talking to you i know when i was on all those pain meds i was saying all kinds of stuff yeah i would have talked to you about anything you wanted to hear about no i remember when i had my uh appendix surgery i was just you know you're in such a sensitive place i remember like home alone was on and i was like sobbing <laughs> like oh and then like Rocky came on after and Rocky, the scene where he's like, I just want to prove I'm not just another bum from the neighborhood. I was like, that's how I feel. Yeah. <laughs> just drenched. And you know, my yeah. wife's like, what is wrong with you? You fuck it. It's appendicitis, you dork. But, um, you know, you're in a vulnerable spot. Yeah. 
<laughs> but yeah, so I, I gotta, I gotta uh, try, and that's what's hard too, because I think this all the time. My dad and I would go to Sox games as a kid, and I, I always wonder. I'm like, was that fun? Were you pumped? Were you dreading it? I have no concept. Because when you're a kid, everything's just normal. It is what it is. So I was like, this is the best, and I'm sure he must have some fond memories of going to the ball games. But I, it is mysterious. I don't think he would have gone back if he didn't. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, and that was, we really connected over that. And um, it's interesting, too. It's also a great place to take someone to show them what emotions are. Right. Home runs and people are going crazy. Yeah. And then there's a, you're losing or you're booing. You're, there's a lot of stuff going on there without him having to show you any emotion whatsoever. Exactly. And that's the great <laughs> it's, it's thing a about theater sports. of emotion. Yeah. yeah. You can really connect uh, through that. And it's that's the beautiful thing about sports, bonding fathers and sons, especially baseball, because of it's every day and in and out in the seasons and all that. But yeah, we'll see. I got to try to call and be like, hey, yeah, I understand you're nervous. I'm nervous, too. What, you, what were you, you know, wonder what he was most scared about? Yeah. I Because mean, he probably had you in his 20s. Yeah, right? he was. Yeah. He had my sister. He was, I think, nineteen and twenty three when he had me. I mean, that's, my mother's two years younger. So, yeah, that's what's. Yeah, I mean, like I said, he was my age. I was already eighteen years old. Right. So, and he must have been. Um, I don't know, scared shitless and anxious, and I don't know. I don't know what he thought. Yeah, because he doesn't tell you. I, yeah, it's all <laughs> just never told you guessing yeah. yeah and that you know obviously plays a role so funny because my dad's dead i wish i could ask him those questions right i wish i could be like and also i'm a twin i'm like yeah two at the same fucking time like what was that like you know what are you thinking what was yeah. that like that kind of shit i want to know well that's the thing that makes me sad in my life is my i'll, I'll be around other parents like my wife's parent her dad's gone now but they had such enthusiasm for when they were kids. They were mm -hmm. like, I remember we would used to take you to camp. We all and would sit in a circle and, and belly laughing about like, remember that? That was crazy. You guys were so my parents just don't tell any stories of like, well, I remember when you were five, you used to this or that. There's just not a lot of that. Or we would get excited about this, or they just don't talk like that. Is your sister more emotional, openly emotional as a mom with her kids than your parents were with her? I think so. Yeah, yeah I think so. So, yeah. So age seems to be a big worry for you with this. Yeah, definitely. I feel you on that. I used to think the same thing. I'm like, hmm, 41. So when you graduate, 51 and 8, it will be 59. Yes, and people are definitely going to be like, is this your grandpa? Right, I'm right. Like, Listen, little motherfucker. Well, I, that. I worry but out about here. These days, at least in California, it's you see so many more older parents. Yeah, I think it's becoming more normal. I mm -hmm. worry about energy and physicality. Like I'm a really like uh, boundful energy guy. I like jumping around and playing basketball and pickleball and tennis and hiking. And I worry that like I don't want to be the dad that's like you go or I'm trying to play catch and I'm like throwing you like I'm leading with the <laughs> elbow because my rotator yeah. cuff is <laughs> so I'm trying to yeah. stretch and all that stuff and try to be a bit healthier because it would I don't want to be just a total shadow of myself when he's the age of of playing and stuff so that worries me of like he's playing baseball and I'm like I can't have a catch with you but I'll Hire just, a all young I man. Do is show you how to bunt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that stuff is, you know, I'm trying to take care of myself so I can do that. We'll see. I don't know. I, 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 it's here's the other thing too. I think it's more something you're seeing more these days because, first of all, it's so much more expensive to survive on this planet these days. And if you're having a kid in your 20s when you're still either in college or paying for college or you couldn't afford to go, like you're. You're saddled with an expensive burden. I'm just being honest. In your 20s, I mean, good luck. I think the reason people waiting more now is they're able to get a job, they're able to start a career, they're able to save some money, and sort of think about, you know, do I really want to do this? Do can I afford this? I mean, I'll say this: unless you're a fucking gazillionaire, there's never enough money to, you know, you're never ready. Right? Ne there's no number where you're going to hit and place you're going to be or anything go now it's exactly time for it's not a you know we're not launching a space shuttle yeah it's kind of difficult though to have but i just mean 
No, that's that's I'm always worried about that too because like right now I'm doing well financially, but you know, comedy is such all businesses now, especially with fucking AI. It just feels like there's no like um, job security anywhere. But that feeling of like, oh, it, the kids get really. A new baby is like not that much more expensive. It's like you got diapers and hopefully they breastfeed, whatever. You can just bite off some of your food and here, take that. But like when they're 14, 15, playing travel, baseball, oh, or tennis, that, whatever, before school, that, all that wait stuff. Wait till you see how much it costs now for little leagues and all right, the stuff right. they have to do and all the school stuff. It's, yeah. Man, it's way more than we, you're going to be like, we didn't get, my daughter goes to a, a summer camp at the beach. And she's like, Dad, what did you do for summer camp in the summer? And I said, we went outside. I didn't go to any <laughs> fucking right. camp. Right. It was go out, ride your bike, play sports, find your friends, you know, all that stuff. And then yeah. be back before dark. Like it was, I didn't go, I went to one camp my whole entire life. It was a soccer camp, Bucknell University. I kept the jersey for a while. It was a, I was the red color team against blue. My brother was on green. There was a blue and another one. And we won. We won the whole thing. Oh, nice. Kept my little trophy and everything, uh, but no fucking camps. Yeah, I did. Ever did you go to camps? I went to baseball camp at Massasoit Community College, but it was you know five one days. time or every summer. I went, I think like two or three summers, but it was five days. And oh. You didn't sleep there. You just it was down yeah. the street. They drop you off. You play baseball at the community college and mm -hmm. come back. Um, but there was no like we're going to whatever. Jason Voorhees camp or whatever. <laughs> camp <laughs> Crystal Lake. Yeah, Crystal Lake. There you go. Yeah, we didn't do, um, yeah, we didn't do any of that stuff. But I always talk about, I'm like, you know, it sounds so weird to be like, back in my day. But yeah, I had a key in my shoe and you, you biked around and then eventually your parents would yell up the street. Sweaty fucking dollar bills and tucked in your sock. Yeah. Biking around. Mm -hmm. I used to hate that. I'm like, why is this money wet? So it's sweat, uh, shin sweat all over it. Yeah, always. Just wet fives. Um, is your wife? What is your wife's biggest concerns right now about having a baby? I don't know. I don't really talk to her. Uh, no. <laughs> you're, you're just like your dad. <laughs> um, I don't know. Right now, she has just been extremely excited. First of all, I keep saying this. My wife makes every pregnant woman I've ever met sound like a whiny bitch. My wife is she's like loving it. She's just have. She. I mean, she's in the second trimester, which you know is is the the good spot, I guess. But she was nauseous a bunch in the first time, but never really got sick. And she's been like running. We played pickleball and she's she's been good. And she's just really excited. I think her main concern is what her career will look like with having a baby because she's a comic. And it's hard because, you know, I've just been fortunate to be a bit more financially successful in the business. So it's, it becomes hard where it's like, it's going to be harder to go on the road. And we'd go on the road together a bunch. She would open for me. But it's harder to both don't go on the road if you now. have a baby. Yeah. yeah. And you don't want to, you want to bring two incomes into that family. Yeah. And it's hard too because it's like for her to go on the road, it's like I have to stay home if she's going to go on the road. But I do uh, at, at the time being right now pretty well on the road. So it's, I think she's worried about that. Um, that's like her main concern is just kind of like, what does my career look like now? Which obviously both of them will have to take a step back while we try to raise it. Just baby. for a second. You'll yeah. figure it out. Yeah. I thought the same thing. I thought there's no way I'm going to be a, a single parent that has my daughter half the time fully invested and make comedy and stuff work. I freaked out about that. Right. And you just to make it work. Yeah, you kind of have to you figure, just figure it, out. it out. Yeah, it's you, a job. you chased a dream of being a stand up comedian. And look at you now. You figured it out. Right. It's just that's what you do. You just figure it the fuck out. Well, that's the listen to everyone and no one. Right. You know what I'm saying? Everyone's going to give you advice. Well, I'll swaddle. Well, this kid might love to be swaddled. This one might hate to be fucking right. swaddled. Even your own siblings could be different. Like, right. Just my only advice is. Figure out whatever works best for you two and or three, excuse me, and do that. Right. That's it. Yeah, you just kind of navigate it like anything else, I guess. It's um yeah, it's funny because I'm like, well, comedy's such a hard job with a kid because you go on the road and you have to leave. And then someone, a comic that I know as a parent, was like, No, it's the best. He's like, Yeah, you leave Friday, Saturday, but you're home all day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Like you have boundful time available. Tons. So We'll see. Yeah, we'll just make it work. It's Yeah, it's one of those things of like, 
It's like that old thing, uh, how do you make God laugh? You tell him your plans for the future. It's like, yeah. there's nothing, I don't know what it will look like, but we'll figure it out. Yeah, you'll figure it out. We'll see. Well, congrats, dude. Thanks, man. Um, this has been great. I've loved talking to you about this. Yeah, me too. Um, plug and promote everything again, please. Um, ComedianJoeList.com for dates. I have two podcasts. I have Tuesdays with Stories with Mark Norman. I have another podcast called Mindful Metal Jacket, which is similar to this. It's a lot of mindfulness and therapy stuff. And um, that's on YouTube. They're both on YouTube. And then I have a brand new special called Enough for Everybody on my YouTube. And it's a follow-up to one that came out last year called This Year's Material. And there's another one from two years ago called I Hate Myself. So three specials all on YouTube, all free. All right. Yeah. Uh, go watch Joe's special. As always, Ryan Sickler on all social media. Get your tickets for the tour at ryansickler.com. We'll talk to you all next week. Mm-hmm.